Okay guys, so uh, today I wanted to talk a little bit about my uh, printer. Um, you know, I you know I uh, print a lot of stuff for 3D printing for the quadcopters and stuff. You know, people have asked, hey, do you have a 3D printer? And yes, I do. You can see it here. And I call it uh, a very crazy, messy printer. Um, but it is... Uh, a very good printer. Um, I built it myself from scratch um, and it was only like two hundred and something dollars you know I know you can buy professional printers like this for uh, you know a few thousand dollars or eight hundred dollars up but I decided to go with this one which um, I got off Amazon and it's it's pretty pretty cheap really is cheap but it's sort of buying the Linux of a uh, Linux computer of computers you know it might be very bare bones but um, in time I've upgraded a lot of stuff on it you know and now it's a pretty good printer so one of the first things I did was uh, you'll notice that I've changed it into this kind of a feeding mechanism uh, meaning there's a, a, a motor at the top here and uh, that feeds through a tube down to um, the hot end or the, the head over here. So, you know, um, it used to have uh, the, the feeding mechanism over here and the hot end all together, but I decided to replace it with this mechanism because this just works much easier. As a result, I had to buy a little kit over here that I put onto this. Um, uh, a stepper motor over here and that was like nine dollars and a hot end like this is an extra nine dollars but the result is you know pretty pretty night and day compared to to the previous version of this and um, you know, I mount a little fan and I designed a, a mount for it and there's my uh, fan that uh, keeps the, the um, you know while, while printing it it actually cools down the print so I can bridge easier. That's one of the first major things I did and that uh, really really made a huge uh, uh, difference. Then the second thing is this printer did come with a um, a heated bed but it's a metal heated bed and it was always you know uh, uh, a little bit bent. Uh, you, you just can't get it straight. So I got this, you'll see there's white underneath this. So I got a, um, uh, you know, it's silicone pad and tempered glass and you buy it, you know, in a little kit and that's a couple of dollars. You put it on there and now this uh, bed is absolutely level, you know. It's, so that's the second big upgrade I did and made a huge difference also to the print because no longer was, you know, the, the, the bed bent like that which you're always going to get with metal it's always straight and with a silicone pad underneath it allows the heat from the heat heated bed to come through and this is always level so that's the second big improvement I did and then the third improvement I added this little thing here and uh, that's actually um, a little computer and um, and it's called the Raspberry Pi. Everybody knows Raspberry Pi. This is only a version one because I had it lying around. But I added that and onto that goes a little uh, Wi-Fi dongle at the back there. And um, through this then I can uh, turn this printer into a remote printer. Meaning I can actually print from my computer through Wi-Fi I can print on it and then um, also I added this little thing um, which is a camera you'll see it over here there's a little camera here that um, you can use to um, uh, monitor your print so I'll show you a little bit of what that is uh, um, of the software that I use there and um, you know and that that really has made this printer into a a pretty awesome printer um, it prints very well I've printed on it um, ABS of course and PLA, a lot of PLA and then I've gone on to print uh, uh, you know f uh, carbon fiber, I've printed uh, a TPU which is totally um, flexible stuff you know if you take for instance my 
phone case um, you'll see that it's completely flexible over here and I printed a little case for it like that on this printer um, oops. Uh, um, and that worked pretty well um, you know and um, and of course I print all my little quadcopter parts on it so this is a really inexpensive printer that uh, um, you can do almost anything with and I've upgraded it to this point where it really is cool let me show you a little bit of of the print uh, of of the software which is called Octoprint and uh, to give you an idea of what I can now do remotely with uh, this Raspberry Pi connected here and the camera and how that software allows me to really put this printer in in the basement or anywhere I want to I don't have to be you know next to it and it can be in my garage or basement and I can uh, print for my computer upstairs so uh, let me show you what I've got there okay so the, here is the UI I've been talking about um, that I said that's connected to that Raspberry Pi it's called uh, Octoprint and um, you know the basic interface of course it's a it's a web interface and that means I can really access it from my desktop or from my phone I can even expose it externally uh, you know it can take a username and a password and you can actually from anywhere connect to it so um, here I'm connecting then over Wi-Fi to my printer and I can see the temperature you know I installed this plugin I can see that the hot end the temperature of that and uh, you know the Raspberry Pi itself and the bed and uh, you know I, I have uh, various options in here um, and for um, it also has what's known as a, a, a slicer in meaning the the, the, the the Raspberry Pi can actually slice files so I've upload you go into upload and you upload a file and here I've got for instance a battery tray for my little 1S batteries, 751S batteries and I can then go and say you know slice it for me using the Cura engine which is installed on the Raspberry Pi and I can say okay um, slice it for me and I have several you know profiles here and I'm just going to do it on standard and uh, after slicing select it for printing so um, you'll actually see that it will start the slicing process after of course I've uploaded the STL file I can start the slicing and you'll see down the bottom here it's doing the slicing at the moment and um, when it's finished slicing it will actually um, and it's at what 93 percent 95 96 percent and you will see that it will actually um, um, put the file into a ready state to be printed so it estimates 1 hour and 17 minutes 8.55 meters of, of uh, filament and that's the file so um, I can now also go look at the file in the g-code viewer so over here I can see the actual uh, uh, file I'll zoom in on it and what the printer is doing I'll show you more on that in a minute here's a terminal that will show all the commands being sent Time lapse. I can because um, well, I'll get back to that in a second. Let's look at the STL viewer. There's a the tray that I'm going to print, and that's what it looks like. So that's the the tray that I'm about to print, and uh, so that's the object I'm going to time print. Um, and it's got this control, and here you'll see the little camera um, that uh, um, I showed earlier that's showing me the hotbed. I can see that it's it's empty at the moment. And here, I, uh, you know, I have a few commands I can do here. For instance, I can say home the printer, uh, um, home the axis, um, and um, you'll see in a few seconds here, you'll see that uh, the picture moves. It's on a, on a bigger and more modern Raspberry Pi, which is much faster than the, the older one I have here. This is still a version one. Um, you know, the picture is much more in real time. Uh, in my case, it, it's quite a bit delayed and um, you know ultimately but at least I you know I've got a good idea of what's going on uh, with the printer that's in the basement so I can look at it and see you know what what's actually going on if it's ready you know if there's something on the bed already or if, if, if it's ready to print or if it's messing up while printing or something like that I don't have to be with the printer at the time 
Okay, and then um, also it's got this time lapse feature, and the time lapse mode is it can take a um, little f video for me of the print, and you you'll see some um, uh, uh, files I printed, and it generates an MPEG file, and I can download those and, and look at them, um, you know, and and see how the print went, um, you know. So I have a little uh, a little video there. So um, back to the the actual print now you know here I'm looking at the temperature the temperature is down to 31 C and uh, you know let's hit the print over here well let me put a time lapse I'm gonna record every 10 seconds and I'm gonna hit the print over here and you'll notice that um, of course now the, the required temperature jumps up to about 220 as well want it to be for this specific filament I'm going to use. Okay, so uh, um, let's wait for it while it warms up. Okay, so as you can see, it has now reached the, the, the required 220. It's at 219 at the moment, the temperature. And it's starting the print, so I'm going to swap over to the actual control over here. And I can actually see it uh, moving. And you'll see that, um, but again, it's, it's pretty delayed on this older uh, Raspberry Pi because the processing isn't that great. But I can see that the head is now moving. And it's going to start the print. So, um, and there it's actually starting the first layer. So, if I look at the, the G code viewer, I can actually ask that it shows me the actual what it's doing at the moment. And you can see that um, I'm going to show the layers above and below. So, we can see that at the moment it's actually busy um, drawing those lines you know basically coloring in the bottom um, and doing the bottom layer and you can see that um, it's moving over here doing its thing so I know what it's busy doing I can again I can look at the printer and there it is it's busy uh, doing the, the bottom layer and um, I've got a time-lapse video going on at the moment and it's busy doing that. Here is the commands in the terminal. You can see them go past as it sends them to the printer. And um, again, uh, um, you know, really, really nice little application. And, you know, of course, if I see something go wrong, I can turn the fan off or on or I can increase my rates, my flow rate or my, uh, you know, my uh, um, a feed rate of, of a filament. That kind of thing I can do straight from here. Um, and there's my temperature printout again. So um, there's my little graph. So, uh, you know, let's watch a little video of it printing that. And, um, you know, so um, again, that I, you know, again, this week I just wanted to share with you guys the sort of what I do uh, um, with my printer, how I print and what I print with. And, um, you know, it's, it's a really cheap printer. Uh, um, that I've totally gone and upgraded. It's all, or like I said, it's a Linux computer that I've made do crazy things. That's only available in really high-end uh, uh, printers, but for a fraction of a cost. Um, and this thing, again, it can print almost anything, and I'm really impressed with it. And, uh, you know, as time goes, I'll f I'm sure I'll find more upgrades to it. But that's the great thing about this. There's nothing proprietary. All the parts to it, uh, you can just buy them off eBay or, or Amazon and stick them in there and it works. And, uh, you know, but what it's not, is not a buy a printer, put it down and it's going to be perfect on day one. It is not that kind of a printer. It's you're going to have to mess with it. Same as a Linux computer, perhaps until finally you get it and it works for you uh, and and it's going to take a while but once you get it going um, you know uh, um, it, it can do some pretty amazing things for you so um, I'll let the time-lapse video f finish and I'll add that to the to my video here and uh, you can actually see it printing so thank you very much and uh, we'll speak again soon